What's going on guys? In today's lesson, we'll be exploring data analysis in psychology. Let's start at the beginning. Data. Psychologists gather primary and secondary data. What's the difference between the two? Primary data is information collected during a researcher's direct observations of participants. For example, answers to questionnaires or test results, while secondary data is information collected from other studies. Oh, and when a researcher summarizes lots of studies to draw general conclusions, this is called meta-analysis and can be done using both quantitative and qualitative data. Remember, quantitative data is to do with quantity, so numbers, whereas qualitative data is to do with information and how we discern it. Qualitative data can be tricky to analyze, unlike quantitative data, which, once collected, can be objectively analyzed quite easily. Thematic analysis is a form of qualitative analysis which involves identifying key themes and categories within the data. This method can be quite subjective as different researchers may read different things into the themes. This kind of analysis might give the basis for a hypothesis. There are, of course, criticisms of this method, such as how would you decide which categories to use, or how do you decide what to leave out of the summary, or even which quotes you will select? All of these are subjective decisions that are potentially susceptible to the researcher's bias. Content analysis is a way of quantifying qualitative data, or turning that data into numbers. This is done by analysing the data into categories or typologies, such as statements about likes and dislikes. Researchers often develop hypotheses during this analysis. Let's take a look at the process real quick. Firstly, a representative sample of qualitative data is collected from printed material, other media or an interview. Researcher identifies coding units to analyze the data such as use of bad language. But prior to this, each unit must be given an operationalized definition. So what constitutes or qualifies as bad language? The qualitative data is then analysed to see how many times each coding unit appears. Following this, statistical analysis is then carried out. So what are the strengths and limitations of this method? Strengths. One is that once a coding system has been established and set up, replication of the study is easy, which improves reliability. Remember, we discussed reliability in a previous video, not sure? Go back and watch it. Another strength is that a clear summary of the patterns in the data can be established. Limitations, as I mentioned briefly earlier, would be the subjectivity of the defining of codes. As researchers, we have bias despite every effort to reduce them. Another limitation is that in the process of coding the data, we may remove detail, which can lead to the true meaning being lost when taken out of context. Like with anything, there are advantages and disadvantages when it comes to quantifying data. Advantages are that it becomes much easier to identify patterns in the data, thus making it easier to summarize and present it. This then allows for statistical analysis to be carried out. Disadvantages of quantifying data, as we mentioned earlier, is that we lose detail and context when converting the data to numbers. We must also take care to avoid bias when defining coding units. Hopefully this gives you guys a better understanding of data analysis in psychology. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Catch you in the next one. Peace.